go for a ride. But I'm in a pickle. I don't know what bike I want to take with me. Big problems, right? Should I take the hardtail or the full squish? The Marlin 7 or the Fuel EX8? I don't know. They're both so good. Alright, well let's have a look at both of them, starting off with the Marlin. Whoa, a hardtail. A bike that doesn't cost a million dollars. What would a ride be like on this bike? It wouldn't be bad, that's for sure, but it's not a full suspension. Nevertheless, this bike is pretty epic. The first thing that says epicness about this bike is the color. Now I know everyone says don't buy a bike for the color, but I do not agree. This bike looks great. Really great. Second pro. This bike has a 100mm fork. That is epic. Sometimes when things get techy, it gets a little rough, but if you know what you're doing, it's fine. Another sweet thing about this bike is as a 29er, so when things do get rough, it handles it pretty well, if I don't say so myself. When you're ripping down a trail and all of a sudden there's a slow person in front of you, there will be no issue trying to stop on this bike. The brakes are great. I mean, they're better than the brakes that came with my bike that's worth $4,000. The Trek Marlin 7 is also a great wheelier. The seat height is natural for wheelies, so you can just float along with the front wheel in the air. No wonder why all the pros use hardtails for wheelies. This bike is epic. There's no way there's any downsides with it. Well, about that. You can't expect a Ford for the price of a Dodge. It just doesn't work that way. You get what you pay for. This bike is less than a grand, and it's going to have its downfalls. First off, it has a 3x9. Now that's really not that bad. But ask any real rider and they will say, nah, one buy all the way. You can't be that picky for less than a grand. Downfall number two. The cable routing is ridiculous. It's just routed wrong and it rubs the frame and scuffs it all up. Now if you're watching me and you are a fan of biking, I can just show you this and you will know where I found this fix. Or should I say hack? Remember how I said the seat was in a natural wheelie height? Well, it's kind of stuck there. You see, these water bottle mounts w prevent the seat from going all the way down. So if you're short, good luck. I don't have that problem too much though. Good and bad, I love this bike. It was my first real mountain bike and it started me into this amazing sport. I learned a lot and I took it to some epic places. Full suspension. The comfort, the speed, the bounciness. I don't need to go on and on about this bike because I did it in another video. So pause this, go check it out, come back, or just keep watching. Do what you want. Here's a quick overview of this bike anyway. It has a 140mm front, 130 back, it has a dropper post, and all the other goodies you'd expect with the full suspension bike. I still don't know what to do. Now Google Hardtail versus Full Suspension and there will be a ton, I mean ton, of videos out there all with the same result. Wait a minute, isn't that insanity? Well, kind of, but not really. So I'll join in and do some comparisons. So let's head out to the trail in my yard and test it out. Wait a second, this trail is not exactly finished. So let's do that first. I'll clear a way out of the woods so we have a nice loop to do our tests on. And remember the jump from the trail video? Well, I'm going to turn it into a North Star type feature. So the North Star feature on the jump isn't going to work for this week. I've been trying to ride over it and I just kept sliding off using that wood and that wood. So next week we'll try and fix it. Let's start off with the full suspension. Now this test is rigged in favor of this bike because I've been riding it for the last 10 months and I haven't rode the Marlin that much, but you guys will still get a pretty accurate test. For the first test, I'll be riding this new trail of the channel that will become the best trail on earth eventually. Subscribe to see its progression. I started a timer and now let's ride the trail on the fuel and see what the time is. Final time, 36 whole seconds. Now let's get on the Marlin and compare and we can see which bike is better and get a final answer.
And with the Marlin, we got 34 seconds, which is two seconds faster than the fuel. And you gotta take this result with a little grain of salt because the trails were muddy today and this trail is fairly flat. Meaning the hardtail without the suspension bouncing would theoretically work better than the fuel. Well, there you have it, the results from my trail test. Let me know if you want to see more comparisons between these two bikes in future videos. Thanks for watching.